stitches. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel about cross stitch and I just talk about cross stitch on and on and on and on and so I have it's been about three or four weeks since my last video stuff has happened um, some people may be familiar with what has, what has gone on and some of you may not know um, if you're new, welcome. I hope you see things that you enjoy and will follow me to see more progress on those things and other things. And if you're returning, you will recognize the sound in the background as my dog who is not getting enough attention. So this might be a very quick video. I don't have a whole lot to show you because I didn't work on a whole lot of things. Um, yeah, I've basically been pretty monogamous as, as I get. Um, I will pick a project for about a week and work on that. Uh, you will... All right, you. Come here. Come here. Okay. Is that what you wanted? We'll see how this goes. Um, this is Khaleesi. Ah, this is Khaleesi. Yeah. She needs a good trim, but... We are now in the throes of winter, so she won't be getting a very short haircut, but yeah, a trim is in call. Um, so anyways, I've worked on only one, two, three, four, five projects um, that were already whips. And I have a new start, and I also have two FFOs she wants down. There you go. So, I didn't bring the FFOs up here. I will either go down at the end of the video and bring them up and show them, or I'll, I'll insert pictures at the end. They are my Halloween fairy. And whispered by the wind beneath the harvest moon. Um, so I will show those at the end. And uh, yeah, but for now, we'll just look at my current works in progress whips, W I P S, whip, work in progress. Um, yeah, I'm just going to grab from wherever whatever's in reach and go from there. I have notes beside me so I'm looking at those. I have wrote down some stats for people who are into the stats. I don't really follow the stats but I don't even know. I didn't make a comparison as to how far it was from the last time. But what I would expect is what it was. So, um, the first one I'm going to show you, right off the bat, let's get it over with, A Stitching Shelf by Amy Stewart. This is a 10-year goal to have this finished, and it's been a year. Started it in August of 2022 with Carolyn Zook from C. Zook Stitch and Kim from Stitch and Stuff. And we both started this for World Cross Stitch Day. We have a Facebook group. Uh, here's where it was when you last saw it. And here's what it will look like when it's finished. And here's where it's at now. And we are working on the bottom row, which is the winter row. And we're almost to the very bottom of the pattern itself. 
I do have my bottom outlined there with a loose running stitch. And um, yeah, so this is now at 33,423 stitches or 9.55%. So if I want to have this done by August of 2032, I should have it at least 11% done. No, I read you the wrong number. <laughs> 42,089 stitches for a stitching shelf, which is 11.21%. So almost exactly where I should be. And for those who don't know, I don't stitch on my big projects in the evenings. I only stitch in general. I stitch on them for about 20 to 30 minutes every morning before I go to work. Whatever amount of time I have available, I come in here, turn my timer on, stitch, you know, maybe a hundred stitches, and then off to work I go. When I get home, I sit in the easy chair downstairs and stitch on a smaller project. But this month, I did take that one downstairs for a week and did give it some extra love because it was behind. So it was, the last time I showed it to you, it was at 39,097. And now it's at 42,000. So it's a gain of 3,000 stitches, which is about what I was behind by. 3,000 stitches is a month's worth of stitches. If I'm doing the math right, that's what we had figured out. 100 stitches a day, 3,000 stitches a month, 10 years. This should be done. I am, yeah, mostly I'm working on it in the whatever I feel like, but it is semi, semi typewriter method in that I'm filling in this area from the top and then spreading out with wherever the color goes. It's just easy for me to keep track of it that way. I have no idea what that noise is. I think it's water dripping. the sunny side of the house so you know now the snow is melting on it okay hatter by Omri artwork is by Omri Koresh charted by Gecko Rouge here is the artwork when it will be finished should look something like that Here's where it was when you last saw it. And here it is now. I really am going to have to check that out. Yeah, it really is just water running. There was snow on the top of the window ledge and now it's melting and running down the window and causing a noise. You might hear it, that drip, drip, drip. That's outside. This is Hatter by Gecko Rouge and it is now at 58,238 stitches or 35.17%. And this is also being worked in the typewriter method, but from bottom up, so lowest point up. And I'm working my way across. Um, I'm trying, right now I'm just trying to hit this line just as a, you know, goal. Fill up to that line, keep going along. Trying not to park nearly as much on this one because, um, 
not really a fan of parking, so I will only do it if it's too far for the next stitch for me to be comfortable going to. And then as I fill it in, like up here, well now as it fills in, I'd be comfortable moving these threads onto wherever they go. So that's where that's at. Hatter. This next one is another big one because that's basically all that I worked on all month. Yeah, I have two other new starts, but they're very... Well, one got more progress than the other one, so... This is... Uh, Inner Depths by Heaven and Earth Designs. Artwork by Chris Ortega. Here's what it will look like when it's finished. And here's what it looked like when you last saw it. And here's where we're at now. So I am mostly working in this side here, trying to bring it, like I said, the typewriter method, bring it down another row of 10 stitches. Yeah. It's getting there. This one is now at 33,423 or 9.55%. These are my three BAPs, big ass projects. Um, and I'm rotating between the three of them. Stitching shelf gets more attention because it's a sow and there's a group and goals. Um, the other two I alternate between them. One week a stitching shelf, one week of inner depths, one week a stitching shelf, one week a hatter. Just keep going like that. I made myself some hot chocolate, so, because, you know, winter. I don't think everybody would appreciate my mug, so I just realized that it's in the frame, but you can't read it, so. Um, anyways. The next one I'm going to show you is something that I have been procrastinating on. And if you've been with me for a while, you might be knowing what I am referring to. In the know, Christmas Eve Couriers. This one is Donner. And it has been ready to be beaded for a very long time. But beading, beading is a whole process. And it's, uh, you know, I need, I need the dining room table. I need to lay out all my beads and st sticky mats and threads and everything. So for me, beading, headspace as well, and magnifiers. Yep, I wear some clip-on magnifiers to do the beading on this because boy, oh boy. This is Picture This Plus 32 Count Nocturne Belfast Linen. And so the threads are very hard to distinguish sometimes. It's, I usually, I mostly don't have the problem with cross stitch but when there's a bead in the way and then you're trying to make sure the beads all line up nicely that's when it becomes an issue. This is not finished. Um, yesterday I finished this corner 
there was, uh, there is still a couple beads missing over here. I finished this corner and this corner. So now I have the saddle and the wreath left and the couple of beads in this corner. So there, Sherry. I picked it up. I put some beads in it. I had asked in my last video if I should stitch on something, name something, and Sherry named the Christmas Eve Couriers. So, nudge taken. Um, and honestly, once I sat down and started doing it, I honestly kind of wanted to not have to put it away. <laughs> I was on a roll. Um, I'm pretty sure I have all the beads for this one. I have all the almost all the beads for almost all of them. There's a couple where I'm going to have to place another order with one, two, three. Of course, with the Magnifica problem now, um, Magnifica beads, okay, last I heard they're not discontinued, but they're not being carried or supplied. Whether or not they're going to be completely discontinued, I don't know. But, you know, that's the rumor. So, I think after I'm done this video, I'm going to make a promise to finish beating Donner. And two new starts. Because of Halloween, I decided that I wanted to have a Halloween start. And I almost did another Halloween start, but this, because, because this one was giving me grief, but I persevered and fudged, uh, frogged my mistake, which was a pretty big mistake, and restitched it. And now it's back, well, not, it's farther than it was when I had to frog it. I'm going to take this uh, Q-snap end off because the one end was under the Q-snap. So let's do this. Okay, so this is Halloween Tiny Town by Heart and Hand. I would like to make it into a drum. I have that other one, not Blooming Tiny Town, Love something Tiny Town. I don't, I don't remember the name of it, but it's not fully finished yet. So, anyways, here's where I'm at. I am just subbing in some over dyed threads that I already had in my stash instead of going to um, get the called for colors, um, which are almost all. No, there's three classic color works and eight, no, six weeks dye works. But. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to stitch this from stash. This is actually the other part of fabric that the Love Blooms Tiny Town was stitched on. That's where we're at. I am not going to have this done in time for Halloween. Next Halloween probably could be done probably not going to make that kind of a promise because yeah life happens things get put on hold and all that all that stuff um and to be honest I don't I don't have a working copy I don't have all my threads picked I just 
too. Oh, I got. I don't know. Oh. A black and an orange and then a bunch of other oranges and not committed to all of the colors that I picked, but I have been using coal for the black and Leo and Roxy's butter chicken for the orange so far. And these are some other options that I pulled out. I think the only one that's really going to be a definite is pumpkin pie. The rest of these are not commit not committed to. So in there for you know they might work they might not we'll see because there are some parts where it's you know quite a bit more muted than the really bright part so yeah the next one that I'm going to show you is a new start. It's not Halloween themed. Um, has a little bit of a story attached to it. And I think I forgot the chart downstairs. I'll be right back. Okay, well, this is bizarre, but I can't find the kit. Um, it was beside my easy chair downstairs, and I thought I brought it up here, and, you know, this is, I don't know, really bizarre, because now I can't find it. But, I will insert a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. Aww. And there is no starting point because this is a new start for me. And it's a stocking, which was an unusual start for October, I understand. The story behind this is... Some of you are aware that my mother-in-law has been in hospital, living in hospital for the last couple of months. Um, sadly, October 15th was her last day on earth. Aww. So I started this on October 16th because I've made a stocking for every one of her descendants. And this one is for the nephew's wife. This is Sarah's stocking. This is going to be the last stocking that I do for that side of the family. I only have so much time. Um, yeah, there are two other people on that side of the family who did not get one of my stockings, but um, there is another person that can make them for them. So I'm not going to commit to theirs. So this is started in the top. This is with the kit fabric, kit floss, kit instructions, dimensions. Yeah, four strands, blended threads, half cross. Um, I don't have a working copy yet, which is why 
basically I'm just doing the banner because it's just all fill in at the cuff at the top. So, yeah. So this is the center, but not, not the center of the, the, you know, the main part of the stocking. It's the center of the whole design. So the toe will extend over here. Uh, the cuff comes about this far, about 30 stitches beyond the center. So, um, and this is 16 count Ada, which is a beast to work with. Um, yeah. Big needle and little needle because you need them both. So, new start. Whips. One of my oldest, this is one of my oldest whips. Aww. Oh my god, dog. What? You should see her. She's just laying here. I would show you, but it's a whole setup. So, here. Take a picture with my. Now, to be fair, she has rheumatoid arthritis. Come here. Why are you being noisy, huh? Yeah, she has RA and so moving is painful. But it doesn't mean you can lay there and be a whiny little bugger. She either needs to go outside or she wants a drink of water. Which we'll do in a minute, okay? Okay, so I did bring up the finishes. Since I went downstairs anyways and had my arms available to bring up stuff. Still looking for that kit. Um, I framed a couple of projects that have been hanging around and now I see a hair is trapped in one of them. Oh, well, my own fault. I did the framing. I did... It's my fault. This is just a plain black frame from Walmart, 11 by 14. And it has Halloween Fairy. By Nora Corbett. I have the original um, magazine copy. I believe it's still available on Hirschner's as a digital download. It's either under Trick or Treat Fairy or Halloween Fairy. Aww. There are two Halloween Fairies. Well, there is another Halloween Fairy, so some people refer to this as Trick or Treat, tri trick or treat Fairy because of that. And when I stitched mine, I did use some of the Krynik, but I also subbed in Petite treasure braid as well. So there's two shades of green metallic there. And I didn't like the dark outline on the moon, so I just did a outline with the metallic thread that it was stitched with. But I think it turned out really, really, really good. I've had it finished for quite a while, and so it feels really good to have it framed and up. Even if it's only for a couple of weeks. And this next one is a frame. We'll make it quick. 
This is a frame that I found at um, a yard sale. <sighs> this is Beneath the Harvest Moon by Whispered by the Wind. This is stitched on 32 count. Nocturne Belfast Linen by Picture This Plus. This is a piece that I had left over from the yard that I had bought for all the Christmas Eve couriers and the sleigh. And there was a piece just the right dimensions for this. You know, she was she was fine before we came up here. I still have haul to show. Um, but yeah, perfect for Halloween. This was the perfect size frame. I had bought the frame because I liked the frame and knew I would find something to fit in it. And it's very close as far as it does touch some of the stitching, but other than that, it worked out really good. I did not trim the fabric to fit the frame. I folded it over. So if I do change my mind about this frame, I still have the excess fabric so that I can go up an inch or inch and a half more if I change it. But there it is. And this is just the all stitched in all DMC. I just realized I don't even have the light on in here. It got dim, but because I'm by the light, you guys are not... <sighs> Squeaky. That's enough. All right, haul. I placed an order with 123 Stitch because I need to make another stocking. <laughs> yes. In a way, it's for her extended family, but this is because it's my new son-in-law. Um, they got married in September. And everybody here has a stocking. He didn't have a stocking. And he's from Mexico. And so I know I've been humming and hawing about what kind of stocking to do for him. He doesn't like snow. He's not religious. Um, so I watched Sarah from Stitch and Stuff stitch this stocking and it never occurred to me Aww. I like the stocking but it never occurred to me that that would be a good choice for my new son-in-law um, but after I thought about it when one of the first comments that he made when he got here the first time last year was that there was so many trees so we're doing a lot of trees. This is the Cranberry in Pines stocking by Rosewood Manor. And I did the add to add all to cart. So everything is in here for this. And while you're shopping, you know, you can't just let chart travel alone. So of course I got the ornament issue and I haven't really had a good chance to look through it but there are a lot on here that I I think I would stitch. Um, but that's me. And in the mood to stitch Halloween stuff and this jumped into my cart. So yeah, 
Eventually, I will also be stitching a Nevermore by Leela Studio. Not immediately. I also got some random beads that are obviously for something, but I just can't remember what. Um, I don't think they're for any of the Christmas Eve couriers. And I don't, I know they're not for Dressmaker's Daughter. Maybe they're for... Uh, maybe they're for another Mirabilia that I have sitting up there and been collecting beads for. As I've been, you know, at to cart shopping. So, Aww. that is all that I have to share. Um, yeah. Not a lot, but still a lot. Some good progress on some big projects. Really good start on a new start and a really pitiful start on a new start. Um, progress on getting a old whip finished and a decent amount of haul and some FFOs. I mean, for me, having things framed, I just don't normally do that. You saw my bin of shame. I really just need to frame more pieces. I mean, I taped up the back oh. for the Halloween fairy, but I mean, that's a seasonal piece, right? So maybe I shouldn't tape it. Well, you know what? It's just tape. It comes off. So That's the thing, right? Because if I take it out of the frame, now it's a piece of styrofoam with fabric wrapped on it that I have to store in another container somehow so that it doesn't get dirty. Because it won't be easy to wash because it's sewn onto the styrofoam because I, I folded it over and did the, the sewing method to the piece of foam core so Aww. yeah so it's just easier to store it in the frame with the rest of the Halloween stuff that we bought because this is our first year in 20 years that we've done Halloween yep alright I am going to go now because I don't think you want to listen to her anymore. Frankly, neither do I. So I will uh, fire up the computer, get this video edited, get it uploaded, finish that beating, and um, maybe you'll be able to see another, not an FFO, Aww. but a finish in my next update which should be in about two or three weeks. Um, I'm going to be honest, I have company coming this weekend, so that means my stitching time is going to be limited. Um, so, anyways, we'll see what we can do. See you in a couple of weeks. Take care of each other. Happy stitching. Bye.